Hello, hello, hello. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Mark Potochnik for uh, moderating. And uh, quick pitch, check out the link at the top of the chat. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but I'm trying out a referral. Please check out uh, American Express. I've had a really good experience with them in Thailand, but I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to get into, we're going to do Elon Semi-Daily, where I'm going to talk about things that Elon has done or Elon has talked about on X or otherwise in the last couple of days or anything, you know, any big news, if there's any big news about Tesla, SpaceX, but I'm just going to go through a few things today. And then I'm going to talk about before, the other thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, the brain, the way we think and, and how, how, what I feel like I'm seeing based on what I'm learning about artificial intelligence and how that applies to human intelligence. So if you stay with me, probably about 20 minutes from now, we're going to dive into this topic. I'm guessing 20 minutes. I don't know. And maybe we'll do some chat before we get there. So yeah, <laughs> loud and clear. Thank you, Mark. So uh, let's start though with, um, not that. <laughs> let's start with this. So Adrian Dittman, who is uh, the artist, uh, who, some people think that Adrian Dittman is like Elon's burner account. And I can only say that Adrian Dittman spends way too much time on X, on the X platform. I don't think Elon has enough free time to have spend, it, spend that time pretending to be Adrian Dittman. Um, Adrian does sound like Elon. My hunch is that Adrian purposefully sounds like Elon and he actually has a separate life and he doesn't sound like Elon in a separate life. Adrian keeps himself private. Um, I've had, you know, um, DMs with Adrian, part of a group with Adrian. He never tells anybody who he is. I don't think anybody actually knows who he is. Uh, but anyway, he does this post talking about changes in the X algorithm, what Elon's trying to do, referencing a video interview that Elon did with Lex Friedman. Adrian's post was November 13th, 2023. And about 10 hours ago, maybe it's 11 or 12 hours ago now, Elon responded to this post it's kind of odd that Elon would respond to, the, to a post, not that he's never done it before, but for Elon to suddenly respond to a post that's like three, four months old is a little bit unusual. I think that's four months old. So I think it suggests that X has made progress towards these things that Adrian was talking about. And I would just really quick, this point about Omar, about Adrian, the Elon haters are harassing Adrian Dittman because they think he's Musk, not the sharpest tools in the shed and Elon's laughing. So I actually have my own... Uh, my my three theories about Adrian are one he's a, he's actually Elon. I don't think that's credible because Elon just doesn't have the time to pretend to be Adrian Dittman. It's you know the endless hours that the guy's on X spaces. Um, two, uh, he's an AI created by Elon or by Andre Karpathy to pretend to be Elon, and I just don't think that the AIs are that good yet. I I think they're good. I don't think they're that good yet to do real time spaces. Probably not yet. Um, and then number three, that he's just an ordinary or somewhat ordinary guy who's trying to keep his life private, uh, keep himself private so he doesn't reveal his identity and he sounds a little bit like Elon. And that's uh, boring, but it's Occam's Razor's answer. And when I said that in a DM group, uh, Adrian said 100%. So I think Adrian admits that his life, his real life is more boring than that. Uh, and a real quick pitch again. American Express. So I'm in Thailand. I, I had a problem today with my MasterCard. I've had problems before with my visa. I've used my Amex a lot. I've never had a problem with my Amex traveling in Thailand, Japan, uh, Vietnam, whatever. Um, I, it, it's not always accepted. The visa is more commonly accepted, but there are a lot of places that do accept Amex. And I just haven't had a problem with it. So just a quick pump. Uh, there's a link in the top of the chat. There's a link in the video description if you're on YouTube for both of those. And I'll, maybe I'll put it, and I, I posted about this on X. Um, you get $250. Um, I just, my personal experience, it's really good. And, and there's the blue cash preferred. I think you get some cash back. I forget the specifics of it, but uh, overall I'm happy with my Amex card. I encourage people to try it. And I'm not, you know, I didn't have any communication with Amex. They actually had a, like a warning. Don't use this on social media unless you do X, Y, and Z. So I did X, Y, and Z in the description below. Okay. So Adrian's points about what's going on with the algorithm. This matters if you're on X and you're trying to get more people to see your posts, or if you are a user of X and you want to understand what X is showing to you and why, I think this gives you some idea. And then the critical thing is the past algorithms were a little cloudy, a little unclear, and maybe not too wise. Um, 
So a couple quick points. It represents a really significant shift in what we're going to see in our feed and overall experience on X. I can only say I use X a lot. I'm on three, four hours a day on the X platform, just <clears throat> shit posting or arguing with people or posting, you know, content I think is important. I've been posting some posts that I think are pretty important. I'm going to talk about one of them in about 20 minutes um, about, you know, human intelligence, what we've learned about human, what I think we can realize about human intelligence and training human intelligence from what we learned about artificial intelligence. I, <clears throat> some of the stuff I talk about is actually serious and valuable and, and worthwhile. Some of it is just shit posting and some of it's political. But uh, the shift from reply guide, tactic, reply guide tactics, tactics to authenticity is where it's all headed. The value of a post will not be defined by engagement in its entirety, but also by the native value of its content. So there's this challenge that Elon talked about in the interview with Lex Friedman about how do you know what's good content and what's not good content. And so they're training AIs to understand which content is worth sharing and which content that was posted is fits with what you like to look at, right? Looking at your account, what kind of posts do you like to engage with? Do you like to look at, okay, there's a post over here. You don't follow that guy. You're not connected to that guy, but that post really kind of fits with what you like. And somehow the AI is able to figure that out. So that may be useful. Current state, this is before the changes. Content visibility is unevenly prioritized with manually written heuristics, favoring recommendations, benefiting large accounts, but limiting the reach of smaller ones. Um, I actually just noticed Elon replied to an account, a fairly small account, uh, was a father posting about something his daughter did online and it seemed to be critical of him, but wasn't really. And he clarified a few things. He was kind of cool about it. And Elon said, you're a wonderful father or something like that. Or that was wonderful, whatever. So the for you algorithm advice highly on these heuristics. Heuristics are computer programmers going and say, let's come up with some, some algorithms to decide what you're going to see, right? So it's like human coded algorithms, as opposed to what Elon said in the Lex Friedman interview, they're going to interview, they're going to shift to AI, figuring it out. Proposed changes, algorithm defined value assignment to content will be driven by end to end architecture based AI. User specific vectors representing preferences will guide content prioritization, providing a refreshed user experience within the feed that is inclusive and personalized. <clears throat> There's a vector space, a set of vectors indicating what content you respond to, what content you like, what content you want to see. And then there's a vector space of what's what the content is out there, and that's able to identify which fits. The new approach approach will promote promote quality content across the entire user base, irrespective of account size. I imagine that account size will be a slight factor, but not necessarily as big as you might think, uh, or as big as it was before. Now, and my theory is that the reason Elon responded to this now is they may have made significant progress toward these things. Additional insights: Elon emphasizes that AI will play a pivotal role in content importance assignment. Remember, Elon said yeah to this post earlier today, four, four months after it was posted, um, suggesting a departure from the current manually driven, pro driven processes. The algo will differentiate between content from accounts users follow, non-AI recommended, and those they don't, AI recommended, which should significantly improve the diversity of the content we're exposed to. Now, this really rings home with me because what I'm going to talk about in 15, 20 minutes, this, uh, this brain thing, what I'm going to talk about here is driven by this exact point about the diversity of the content we're exposed to. This is connected. This is this is part of it. I just keep seeing this issue of diverse data. I see it in Optimus. I see it in FSD. Diverse data really matters. <clears throat> um, can you comment on the bot? Lost Berber. Ber oh, I lost Berber with Stephen Mark Ryan's target last night. Lost Gerber. Berber? Berber's okay. Um, implications. The proposed changes signify a fundamental transformation as how content is presented and represented with a move towards a more democratic and AI-driven system. I'm not sure democratic is the right word, but okay. Smaller accounts may benefit from increased visibility, <coughs> creating a more level playing field based on content quality rather than follower count. Um, it's off screen a little bit. The mention of AI differentiated recommendations for followed and non-followed content suggests a strategic effort to broaden user exposure to diverse content. Diverse content again. Um, commitment to enhancing user experience by tailoring content suggestions based on individual preferences. Or, or, you know, Elon's line, they're trying to ma uh, maximize unregretted user minutes. They want you to enjoy your time on X and they want you to spend more time on X enjoying that time on X. What we're looking at is a change that finally addresses the FOMO, fear of missing out dynamic between accounts which, with reach and truly compelling content. Be a major chance for new accounts, small accounts, and anyone really to advance into the greater ecosphere they were left out of before. Goodbye, reply guy. 
<clears throat> reply guy, I think, is a strategy where you reply to a bunch of accounts and that gets you some follows. Hello, value adding content. So uh, I thought that was worth seeing. I think the fact that Elon responded to that just today is a suggestion that something's making progress. I can only say I keep seeing people saying, oh, X is terrible, you know, the, the, or the call it Twitter. And they'll say, oh, everything's gotten worse. And I can only say I spend a lot of time on what was then Twitter and now X. I feel like I'm enjoying it more. I don't have a, a, a meter. I don't have a measure. I personally feel like I'm enjoying it more. And just to be clear, I am monetized on X. I make, I don't know, six to $800 a month, something like that on X. I make about the same I make on X as I make on here, maybe a little more on X now. Depends on how you count the Patreon and, and daily live revenue. Uh, but yeah, something in that ballpark. So shifting, I just want to mention this. This is more political, but there's uh, the former U2 CEO's son died from uh, fentanyl. Apparently fentanyl was in whatever drug he was taking, caused an overdose and he died. Um, so there's a lot of people talking about this. Elon said, all things considered, it would be better to legalize, regulate, and tax drugs just as we do with alcohol and cigarettes, both of, both of which are drugs that cause millions of deaths every year worldwide. Um, if you don't know this, alcohol kills like 100,000 people a year and cigarettes kill 500,000 people a year and alcohol kills more than all other drugs combined. Well, you know, all the illegal drugs, all the talk you're hearing about fentanyl deaths and all these other deaths, alcohol kills more people and, and tobacco kills five times that many. So... Um, but the, the other thing I want to mention there, no, notice that was uh, 11 hours ago. I had posted something very similar 19 hours ago. If we legalized all drugs and let pharmacies sell them, this problem would end tomorrow. You've got people using illegal drugs that did not come from a pharmacy. If you buy drugs from a pharmacy, then it's coming from a regulated system and is not laced with fentanyl. But if you're buying drugs from somebody on the street or somebody you don't know or somebody who's not... Re the fentanyl can get in there. And drugs can be tainted in many ways. And drugs were tainted before fentanyl was, was common. <clears throat> and alcohol was tainted during alcohol prohibition for the same reasons. And I'm just pleased. I'm, I don't think Elon got it for me, obviously. But I think it's funny that, you know, I, about six or eight hours after I posted this, Elon posted something very similar on the same topic. So therefore, Elon listens to me. And I'm actually Elon's alt account, <laughs> not Adrian. Um, Elon says the original reason for creating open AI, liberty consists in the division of power, absolutism, and the concentration of power. In other words, if you have, you, if you have concentrated power, you have absolute, absolutism and not freedom. And if you have division of power, you have liberty. At the time Elon helped create open AI, it was because a lot of the AI power was concentrated in Google and particularly DeepMind. And so Elon, and this is, you know, Larry Page stopped talking to Elon about this. So, uh, and then Matthew Donegan Ryan says, so did your founding donation turn into equity or what, what happened to it? Elon said, it isn't clear to me how the open AI structure is legal at all. I was offered shares at various points, but it seemed unethical illegal to accept them. Um, I worked, I, I was an attorney in New York state. There's an office of the attorney general. There's a, a arm of the attorney general's office in New York state that prosecutes nonprofits or, you know, polices nonprofits for engaging in behavior that doesn't fit with their nonprofit status. And I assume that California has something similar, and I don't know why there's no investigation of that. I mean, I have a theory that they've been bought off. I mean, <laughs> we could go deep into how the legal system has been badly corrupted. Maybe it was always corrupt, but uh, you know, I think certain other things we've seen in the news today suggest that as well. So you've seen in the news recently suggest that as well, but I just don't want to go there. So I want to get into the brain thing in a minute. Then just really quick, uh, and again, this is about diverse data to an extent. In this video from last year, Ashok Alaswamy is the uh, head of Tesla autopilot team, head of basically AI at Tesla, explains how Tesla has trained a generative text to video model on their data set so they can augment training data and provide many variants on an example with just a single English prompt, a simple English prompt. Very cool. Wonder what it can do today. I think Elon uh, replied to this or reposted this or something like that, reposted the video. So this relates to OpenAI's Sora that was just announced, which is generating video content. And some of the videos that they showed were generating video content of cars driving on roads and changing different things. And Tesla has been doing that for a while. And the Tesla version has actually a better appreciation of the physics of driving. So Tesla's AI is actually pretty good. It, you know, and some their real world AI is better than OpenAI's. And so their, and their ability to generate video content, you know, may be significant. So um, <laughs> so, all right, 
So before we move on to the brain thing, I just want to respond to some comments in the chat. Gerber called Elon a white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that's probably what Elon was laughing at somebody who said, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a racist. I hate white liberals more than anything else. Um, yeah, that's just silly. Elon's not a white supremacist. Elon's not a racist. Uh, lost Gerber is just lost Gerber. Uh, I'm on Facebook a tiny bit to keep in touch with friends. I don't like it. Uh, no drugs, no alky, no smoky. Unboxing 101 says, Warren, at what point will you stop saying not worry about short-term stock price? You've been saying that for years. At some time, at point, it wouldn't be considered short-term anymore. Uh, it's, I think it's wise to be concerned about the short-term stock price if you are planning on selling soon. So if you expect to sell stock within, let's say, the next three months, right? Now you have a, maybe six months. You have a short-term time frame where you're thinking, I might want to be selling stock soon. If you are thinking, I'm not planning on selling, selling stock till 2030, and then you get to 2030 and you're like, okay, yeah, actually, I'm going to follow through my plan. I'm getting ready to sell stock. Then the stock price then starts becoming relevant. But, you know, what really matters for a long-term investor is what, what's going on within the company? What, what value are they generating? And the key point about this before, about Tesla's generative AI, is if all these other generative AI startups are getting massive valuations, and Tesla has had generative AI running for more than a year, uh, if not a lot longer than a year, then, you know, why isn't Tesla valued based on having that ability? Because the markets aren't rational. Um, Matthew Hurgis says, is it Hurgis says, I think the lesson from Prohibition's time is it doesn't matter what you ban or make illegal, people are going to be people. No, it, it actually matters because when you prohibit things, you actually make the problems worse. Um, I would say the same thing about immigration, which is, you know, where I, 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 I believe in open borders. I just say, stop giving them free stuff. I think that's a much better solution than trying to close the borders, which just doesn't work. Um, yeah, the turn impossible delay t-shirt, elonbits.com, uh, there was, did I, did I miss it? I thought I had another one. I think I have one more image to put up. Where is it? Uh, Elon concept. I must've missed this one. Um, there's this guy who did a video about concept cars and then showed Cybertruck and said, he said, you know, all these other companies are putting up concept cars at these auto shows. And then he pointed at Cybertruck and said, this looks like a concept car, but it's actually real. And people are buying it today and showing up in people's driveways. And Elon said Tesla will never make a concept car that doesn't become reality. A lot of people pointed to Roadster. Well, Roadster, you know, he didn't say, like, that's turning impossible into late, right? Roadster is going to happen. It's going to be late. I, there was an indication it's going to be this year. Drew did mention future vehicle programs in relation to the 4680 cell. So maybe the Roadster is going to be using 4680s. Uh, that seems like a reasonable conclusion. Um, so we think it's coming. Hopper says, do you believe 2024 is the indicator for FSD? I'm not sure what you mean by indicator. Um, I think we're going to see continued improvement in FSD. It's possible that version 12 will, there, there's, there's this point where um, I would say there, there's a, a trigger point or maybe an inflection point. There's a moment when FSD gets good enough that Tesla turns off the next, that you no longer get prompted to don't look at your phone, you no longer get prompted to touch the wheel, and the car only prompts you when it thinks you need to take over and says, hey, you need to take over within five seconds or else I'm pulling over, right? That would, be a, that would indicate that they're really close to solving self-driving. And that would be a far more useful feature for drivers if you can finally look at your phone and you don't have to constantly touch the wheel and you don't have to keep your eyes on the road, then all of a sudden, it, that feature becomes a lot more valuable. Um, so I think that might be a, 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 a trigger for the stock to go up. But again, that's short-term thinking. I don't worry about short-term thinking. Um, you know, Marriage Partners Ministry, there's a lot of people talking about Ross. Marriage Partners Ministry says, Ross is a people pleaser who's consumed in liberal thinking social circles. His thinking, if you call it, is highly influenced and biased by those around him. That is exactly what I want to talk about next. So let's dive into this. This is a big topic. This is kind of like a brain stretcher, okay? And um, the, the purpose of this, this was uh, this image was created by ChatGPT and Dolly 3. It didn't actually deliver what I asked for in the prompt. I wanted the, the, the background scenery to also give suggestion of data. Um, it's exactly what you said. Ross is consumed in liberal thinking social circles. So 
when we talk about FSD, we, you know, you can't just have it driving on highways and use highway data to train FSD because you need to train FSD, full self-driving, on all kinds of circumstances so that, you know, the, what, what, what are referred to as edge cases and corner cases, you need to be able to, ex you need to expose the AI to diverse data, to highways, to mountain roads, to country roads, to dirt roads, to parking structures and parking lots and busy streets and empty streets and nighttime and daytime and rain and snow and fog. You need to expose it to a lot of different data so that it gets a better understanding of the real world. Right, we're trying to develop real world AI. An argument that I've been having with CERN, CERN Basher and Scott Walter and others is I feel like every influencer is saying Tesla bot Optimus is gonna be going to factories. They're gonna make a lot of them, they're gonna go into factories, but that's not exposing Optimus to diverse data sets. You want Optimus walking in forests, you know, walking on hills, walking on flat ground, walking on concrete, walking on sand, going into shopping malls, going into grocery stores. Um, backcountry roads, going, walking in a backyard, walking along a creek, you know, it's all kinds of environments and you want it manipulating a variety of different kind of, kind of objects, not doing rote tasks. If you want to develop real world AI, you want to expose Optimus to diverse data sets. This is really important. So take that back and look at us. Look at our brains. Our brains are biological neural nets that are trained on the data that we're exposed to. So when we're children, we're crawling around and we're crawling around on a tile floor or a carpeted floor and whatever kind of floor we're, we're walking, we're crawling around on, that's an experience for us. And maybe one day we're on a carpeted floor and one day we're on a tile floor, one, way, one day we're on a concrete floor, one day we're out on the grass in the backyard, right? We're in different environments. And then we start walking and we walk in different environments. And we hear different voices. We hear mommy's voice. We hear daddy's voice. Maybe we hear other people's voices. Maybe we hear other languages. Um, as we grow older, you know, we tend to hear a lot of what we hear in school and from our friends. My view is the more diverse the data set that you expose yourself to, the better you will understand the world. And so many people, like we were talking about Lost Gerber before, and he's consumed in liberal thinking social circles. I just... One of the things that, tr not triggered this, I was already thinking about this, but it emphasized this, was I was out last night with a uh, friend Sanju, who's another Tesla investor. He's on YouTube, he's on X. He's, um, he's part of some groups I'm a part of. And he, he's, he's in Bangkok briefly and we met up and we ended up going out to a, a meetup. And there was a guy at this meetup who was so sure of himself that EVs don't work in winter. That, you know, it just like we talked about a bunch of topics and it was obvious to me that the guy was consumed with probably somewhat at least left leaning mainstream media information. Um, you know, when I showed him a Rolling Stone article about COVID patients waiting out in the, in the cold uh, because uh, sorry, gun, gunshot victims waiting out in the cold because people had taken ivermectin, which was a total lie. Um, and, you know, it was so dumb because it was September in, in Oklahoma, early September in Oklahoma, which is really hot out and they're all wearing winter coats. And why would gunshot victims, it was just so dumb. And, you know, well, that's not mainstream media. You know, I'm talking about AP News. I'm like, well, AP News repeated the story. You know, like he, he we know if, if you're following this stuff, you realize that news gets Tesla wrong. They get all the facts about Tesla wrong. Well, then they're probably wrong about a lot of other stuff. Right? And how do you expose and I, I see, he says where do you get your news he said well i follow all, all kinds of accounts on x and i see a lot of different perspectives and i learn from that and i interpolate from that and i think i get more diverse data from the x platform and of course also i'm in thailand i've spent time in japan i talk to people from all kinds of countries um i expose myself to but but i i feel like i don't expose myself to enough diversity of data and i think this is just an interesting question that for all we keep talking about AI and trying to train the neural nets and what data are we exposing it to and what models are, is it using? It's like, well, what's in our heads? And I'm confident that it's true that we train our biological neural nets on the data that we're exposed to. And that if you restrict yourself to limited data sets like your liberal social, your liberal social circles,
then you're going to get one perspective and you're not going to be, and you're going to decide that that other perspective, that those MAGA people are terrible. And if you're stuck in your MAGA circles, then all the liberals are terrible and they don't know anything. And if you're pro-Ukraine, then all the Russians are Nazis. And if you're pro-Russian, then all the, all the Ukrainians are Nazis. And if you're pro-Hamas, then all the Israelis are committing genocide. And if you're pro-Israel, then the Hamas people are evil. And it's like, well, how do you know you're getting a sufficiently diverse set of data? And the reality is none of us is getting a sufficiently diverse set of data because there's so much data out there that we can't possibly process at all. So, <clears throat> um, look, FSD, Tesla gets the data whether you buy FSD or not, right? Your car is, your car is generating data anyway. So I, I think the, 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 you, I, you think that they need to give you FSD to get the data. They're getting the data anyway. Are, would they get more data if you bought FSD? Yes, but I don't think they need that data. Um, so Mark says, I hope that it works for my dementia wife. I don't, dementia is a different problem. That's basically a degradation of, if I'm going to like go off, keep my, my mother and my grandmother both ha had Alzheimer's, which effectively led to their deaths, right? Um, or contributed to their, uh, har har their relatively poor living conditions in their last years of life. And so I experienced dementia, particularly with my mother. Um, I don't think that's about exposure to data. I think that's about a breakdown of the neural net models in the brain. Um, the breakdown of the brain, which effectively is a breakdown of the neural net models. Um, Starship is being turned into a weapon. Uh, not yet. I, I do believe that the U.S. military is planning to use Starship to deliver payloads, not necessarily explosives, but payloads like, you know, uh, you want to send an elite team of... Uh, of uh green berets or something or army rangers or navy seals to a location really fast put them in a starship you'll get them there really fast um i don't think there's any plans to use it as a weapon in that in that sense not to say that it's impossible it's just i don't think it's necessary i mean i don't i don't think they need a a, a payload that large to deliver most weapons the intercontinental ballistic missiles deliver a pretty powerful weapon without having that size um, Marriage Partners Ministry says 2024 will be a big year for FSD develop development in terms of V12 and compute coming online. I wouldn't want to be out of Tesla in 2024 in hopes of timing a 2025, 2026 entrance. You know, this timing thing is really interesting. I suppose you could take the theory that when Tesla cracks the nut and they take the nags away, that's the signal that the stock is going to go up and that Wall Street will be late. And so you could wait for that moment and buy then. Maybe. But you might be, it might, Wall Street might react or other investors might react a lot quicker and the stock might go up and you might, you know, there's this, you, you might miss the jump. I don't like playing timing games. You never know what's going to happen that Tesla's going to announce um, that's going to lead to a big jump in the stock. Um, you, it's, a, it's a very risky game to play timing games. I have kept private that would limit retail from investing directly at our own limits if traded publicly. I'm not sure what the private was referenced to. Um, I would argue that X has the most diverse data sets. I think that there's a game out there where all the AI companies are, are trying to get more data. And this is one of the reasons why I think Elon probably would be better off um, reducing his time at Tesla, increasing his time at XAI, and focusing at XAI on acquiring more data. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of data out there that isn't corralled yet. And getting access to more, more data is going to matter for all kinds of AI development. And I'm talking about like data from uh, telescopes, data from, you know, what data do the Starlink satellites generate? Are the Starlink satellites have Earth-facing cameras? Are they using that data? What else is on a, like, you kind of wonder, like, what's on a Starlink satellite? Is, is the Starlink satellites, are they getting data? Is that data useful? Because that, you know, if they're getting a huge amount of inter tra internet traffic through Starlink, that could be useful too. Did you see the anti-Starlink Berlin protests targeting setting Tesla cars on fire? I did not see that. Um, those like one-off events probably are more entertaining than they are meaningful. You know, somebody throws something at the Mona Lisa. Like the Mona Lisa is under like bulletproof glass. I'm not even sure it's the real Mona Lisa under there. Um, so that's just like you're getting attention for yourself. And, you know, the ultimate problem there is, you know, idiots blocking traffic in, in European countries don't get punished for it. Like, if you don't start punishing people for disrupting everyone's lives, they're going to keep disrupting people's lives. Um, let me turn this 
move that off. James Wood says, as for SpaceX, regulators continue to delay Elon's plans for space travel, etc. Has there been another delay? As far as I know, the the launch number three is happening in a few weeks. I haven't seen anything delaying that. Is there, is there James Wood, is there something you're seeing there? Because I missed that. Major Human says the future is synthetic data. I'm interested in that topic, Major Human. I'm not sure that synthetic data is going to be as good of a solution as we want to think. I think I heard something about Chile, Elon. Not sure if I spelled it right. I, I don't I don't I don't know. You know, without without knowing more, I can't as far as I know, they're still on for a launch in about two or three weeks. Hopefully not two weeks, because that could be six months. How can OpenAI ever raise seven trillion? The seven trillion was not serious. Uh, somebody misunderstood Sam Al Sam Altman. So Sam said, okay, I'm going for eight. Uh Jim Keller, who was the chip chip engineer for uh FSD version three chip and maybe worked on version four. What else? Did he, I forget what chips that he worked on at Tesla. Um, he said, I can do it for under 1 trillion. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot spent on AI. I don't know about seven. It's, I don't think open AI is going to raise 7 trillion. I don't think that was serious at all. Um, uh, what What's needed by all these AI companies is more compute and more data. Um, notice that the th down thumb buttons do not work. Are you talking about on YouTube? Um, I don't know that the down thumb button doesn't work. I think that what happens is that the YouTube channel does not show the number of thumbs down. It only shows the number of thumbs up. It's some There's some reason why they do it. I can see on my channel what percent thumbs up and what percent thumbs down, but I don't think that's publicly available information. Somebody told me there's some sort of I don't know if it's a Chrome app or something like that where you can actually see the, the percent thumbs up and thumbs down, but I, I haven't seen that. James Wood said, I meant SpaceX past delays and maybe delays and maybe more future. Yeah, it's very clear that there's going to be more roadblocks set up. And, you know, the thing is, it's like the U.S. government is thwarting itself because there's large chunks of the U.S. government that want Starship to be up there and running. Right. The, the, the military loves SpaceX. The military absolutely loves SpaceX. They, they just love SpaceX. They want more SpaceX, more space. They love launching on SpaceX rockets and they're salivating at being able to launch bigger, bigger payloads on Starship. And, you know, that some, you know, idiot in the FAA or the fish and wildlife is trying to slow Starship development. I'm sure the military is like, what the hell are you guys doing? We need this thing. Hopper says, I think Google has won the AI race already by computer alone. Well, Google has some edges. OpenAI has some edges. Meta has some pretty good edges. There's a lot of good stuff happening out there. My, my theory is that really there's some 17 year old in his mom's basement hacking away at some neural net model that's going to like change everything and it's going to require a lot less data i mean if you think about it human babies learn a lot with a lot less data than we're feeding to fsd right we're feeding i don't know hundreds of millions of miles of data or billions of miles of data to the cars and the car still can't drive a car how much does a 17 year old the 16 year old get or 15 year old get before they start driving a car um what do I think about third-party apps and an IPO for X? Um, third-party apps for X, I haven't heard about that. Third-party apps for Tesla cars, for the Tesla you know, screens. I don't think there's enough Tesla cars to support a large ecosystem of app developers. You know, If you think about it, iPhones, there's like hundreds of millions of iPhones or billions of iPhones and billions of Android phones. So there's a much larger market for phones apps than there is for apps for the cars. I haven't heard anything about third-party apps for X. I'm not sure what that would mean. I don't see X doing an IPO anytime soon. Um, I think they have to become profitable. I think they have to grow faster. They, I think they have to make some more material changes. I could see a small IPO where they... I don't think Elon wants to give up control, right? He's big on that. So I could see them doing an IPO where they sell off, you know, like 5 or 10% of the company. At a, if, they, if they can get a high valuation, then it makes sense. And then the the earlier investors can get liquidity, liquidity, but you know, they only took this private, I don't know, two, three months ago or two, three, you know, two years ago, maybe I would expect it to take three more years before they do any kind of IPO. There's a good scholar out of Scott Alexander post on the $7 trillion number astral codex 10. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I think the $7 trillion, if you're looking at, you know, how much money is it going to take to develop, how much money is going to be spent on developing AI over the next 10 years, 7 trillion might be right. Well, the military likes Elon. No, no. So there's there's certain aspects of the government that don't like Elon, right? Like Joe Biden doesn't like Elon, right? The the Democrats in Congress don't like Elon. 
but the military loves Elon. It's, just, it's very obvious. To me. I mean, there's, are there a few generals somewhere who don't like Elon or admirals? Yeah, sure. But the military in general loves Elon. Um, 472 Water says, Warren, why don't you have a Patreon like solving the money problem? I do have a Patreon. It's linked in the video description. Um, I personally would recommend supporting me as a YouTube channel member. Uh, my, my favorite would be to support me as a Twitter, as a subscriber on the X platform. Um, the Daily Lie, uh, warrenrelic.locals.com. These are all linked in the video description below, but my Patreon is linked in the description below. And I have, I think, more than 100 supporters on Patreon. I don't push Patreon or this that kind of support the way others do. Like Jordan Giesecki and the, and the Limiting Factor, he really pushes Patreon. Um, he doesn't really worry so much about getting ad revenue. He focuses on developing Patreon support. I think that's been a really good move for him. I think it's been really good for Stephen Mark Ryan. Um, I'm really doing this more for fun. And I'm I'm thrilled if somebody, you know, I I, I appreciate the money. I do, I do live off the money. That way I don't have to sell any Tesla stock. I'm making enough money as a content creator that to live comfortably in Bangkok without have, or Thailand without having to sell any of my stock. Um, I'm roughly break even on what I spend versus what I earn. And, you know, I have enough stock that none of this is going to matter if the stock 10X is, right? So it doesn't really matter now, but if the stock 10X is, it's all kind of over. Um, Major Human says the $7 trillion number is not just chips, but everything, including real estate. So yeah, that, exactly. There's going to be a whole ton of money spent it on building server farms and building uh, solar panels to support it and hiring engineers and all this stuff. It's great stuff. The car is better. It's a big giant iPhone. The car is great, but you know, when you're in the car, you're probably using your phone rather than using the screen on the car. I, I personally, if I'm in the car, I'm probably looking at my phone. If it's a robo taxi, you're probably gonna be looking at your phone rather than the screen in the robo taxi. I just don't see it. <clears throat> Tesla cars, trucks will be a way for third party apps to access. You know, when you go out, um, I just don't see it. I, I don't see it because, you know, 10 years from now, we're going to start having Neuralinks in our brains and we're not even going to be using phones anymore. We're going to do everything through our Neuralinks and the screen in the car is not going to... I'm not even sure why they put a screen in the back seat of the car, the new Model 3 or why they have one in the... I, I, I have a Model X Plaid. I drove 44,000 miles in it, you know, hardly ever used the screen in the back. I don't understand why that's so important. If Starlink IPOs, will SpaceX still be majority owner and stay private? Good for Elon Control. Yes, yes. What I expect to happen is that Starlink would IPO and issue and, and sell about, you know, 10% of the company, of the Starlink subsidiary would spin off. It would then become liquid and anybody who's currently a shareholder would be able to sell. But SpaceX would probably continue to own more than 50% of Starlink and Elon would probably control more than 50% of SpaceX. And SpaceX would stay private. Yeah. Do you like Japanese girls or Thai girls more? I like women. I like white women. I like Japanese women. I like Thai women. I like Latina women. I like pretty much women. Um, currently, I have a Thai girlfriend, so I would say I like Thai girls more. I do like Japanese girls quite a bit. But, you know, I think women are hot. I, I Honestly, I'm attracted to women in their 50s, women in their 20s. You know, I, I think they're all attractive. Did you watch the video about the Nicola Badger truck and that was actually real? No, and I don't care. Are they making it in volume? No. Does anyone care? I guess there's a few people who care. I just don't think it's important. Tesla might need to keep installation for electric solar separate from Tesla due to losses for contractor work and liability reasons, in my opinion. Um, installation for electric solar separate from Tesla. No, the liability liability stuff is tiny. Tesla is a trillion, effectively a trillion dollar company and getting sued for a hundred thousand dollar contractor dispute is trivial. Um, that stuff doesn't matter that much. And a lot of the, a lot of the installs are done by uh, third party installers anyway. Uh, my friend Amy says screen in the back is for the kids. Yeah, but the kids probably have phones or iPads. I mean, my kids had iPads like 15, 20 years, 15 years ago, 15 years ago or so my kids had iPads. They'd rather be on their iPad or their iPhone or their phone or whatever than, than look at a screen in the car that they can't really reach. There are some hot, hot TS and BKK too. I don't know what TS is, but, um, or hotties. Yeah, there's some beautiful women everywhere. I, I thought women in Florida were, I will say that Asian women tend to be thinner. 
um, I, I would say that Asian women tend to be, I don't know, traditional is the word I would use. I think that Asian women tend to be more interested in pleasing their man in a variety of ways, whether it's cleaning the dishes or something else. Um, if you get remarried, will you legally protect your wealth against a divorce? Uh, yeah, probably. I think my, you know, I don't think I have to worry about that one, but yes, I probably will do something like that. Um, my rough plan is to establish a trust in America to benefit my next wife and children rather than, and, you know, do a prenup that says you get the trust. And the point of having the trust in America is because Thailand doesn't really have trust laws. So, um, how does Optimus compare with others? Your knowledge of Japan could be helpful here. I don't think Japan has anything to do with it. I was talking about this in another video. Maybe I was on Herbert's channel or Randy's channel. Um, I don't think anyone else who's building a humanoid robot, I think most of the, the companies that are building humanoid robots other than Tesla, like the form, uh, what is it called? There's two companies, that's not formula. There's two companies that are talking about building uh, humanoid robots. And to me, they're basically not serious. You need to be able to manufacture at large scale and at low cost. And you need to be able to gen have enough compute to process, to gener to train on the data that you get. And I don't think anybody has the ability to manufacture bots at scale. And then I don't think anybody has the compute that Tesla has. Maybe the Chinese companies have a better shot, but the two uh, American companies I saw, Sanctuary and I forget what the other one was. I just don't take them seriously. Rear screen is great for robo taxi passengers potentially. No, because your phone is going to be networked to the car anyway. You're going to be using a phone app to get in the robo taxi and you're you're going to prefer using your phone. Look, I, I'm probably wrong, right? Like Tesla's smarter than me. They know what they're doing. They know how much people use the rear screen. They must have decided it was worth having, but I just don't get it. Will I buy nine shares of Lucid and sue the CEO? Do they even have a board of directors? No, I'm not. I, I, owned, I owned one share of Lucid Motors so that I could attend a shareholder meeting. I, I don't intend on any kind of class action lawsuit or whatever. James Wood says that Heavy D Sparks is a nonprofit. He gets all his stuff from government for free. I think not positive. I don't know what Heavy D Sparks is. How much did you lose on Arkhamoto? I had like a $100 investment in Arkhamoto and I probably lost like $95. Do you see the limiting factor video? Yes, I saw the limiting factor video on the asymmetric coding. Yes, I did see that. I think it's still unclear what it means. When do men spend, spend their day pleasing women? Uh, we build stuff and we bring home income and uh, some of us make an effort to please our women. Is it possible for me to be as educated as you? Do we have to read a lot? Um, I don't know what, what it means to be educated. I mean, I have a college degree, a master's degree, and a law degree. You know, I was in a PhD program at Stanford, and I got a college degree at Rice University. I was a lawyer, and I, I've read an awful lot of stuff. I mean, I suppose you could read a lot. I think you should read a lot. I think there's a lot of ways to get educated. I don't know if educated is the word I would use. I would say, going back to this theme... I would say you want to expose yourself to diverse data. You want to expose your biological neural, neural nets to as diverse a data set as possible. You know, like I speak Japanese, Spanish, and, some, and, and read French, and I'm learning Thai. How many languages do you know? What efforts are you making to understand the world from different perspectives? I think all that matters. You don't have to be as educated as me. You want to be as educated as you can be. Why has Tesla Semi stalled? Tesla Semi is waiting for the new factory to be built. They're building a new factory in Nevada. They, they broke ground on the new factory, I believe. So when the new factory is done, they'll be spitting out semis in high volume. They're probably waiting for more. Uh, they're waiting for that factory to be built. And they're, I think they're refining what they're learning with the pilot production. Uh, Mary, Sue Mary Barra. Yeah, that's, Mary Barra is a joke. Uh, I know a guy personally that can get any surplus government has just by signing for it. It's a real thing. Anyone who does it right can do the same. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Meta is spending 10x more on NVIDIA than Tesla XAI. Can, can Elon win the AI race? Um, I think the thing that's going to hamper the, the big tech companies is that they're too woke. They're, they're, hand, they're hamstringing or handicap, they're handicapping themselves by... <laughs> By limiting the data they can access, by limiting the output they're going to come up with, um, there's also a question of having talented engineers. And then, you know, is real world AI important for the development of more meaningful AI? Tesla has the lead in real world AI because Tesla has more data on real world data than anybody else because of all the cars driving around. It was coming soon with the bots. Nobody else is generating real world data like that. Is there a cure for STED? 
we haven't found one yet. I think it's exposure to more diverse data sets, but people, people are very resistant to that. They don't want to take that vaccine. Um, sanctuary and figure. Thank you. Figured. I think, I think it's figure.ai and sanctuary.ai. Put AI in your, in your name of your company and say you're doing something Tesla's doing and you can raise money from venture capitalists and other investors. When your phone app controls the rear seat climate, then the real rear screen is pointless. Well, that's going to happen. And I think that might already be true. I think my phone app controls the, the climate, doesn't it? It, closed the, it controls the seat heaters. When is Starlink going to IPO? My guess is 2025, but I don't, it's hard to say. Um, and I, I think what's going to be interesting is what's the IPO price for Star? What's the mark, the valuation of Starlink going to be at that point? Because my guess is the valuation is going to be hundreds of trillions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars. American women are educated professional and don't need men to take care of them. They, they don't need men to take care of them, but uh, it, it, I would say this. This is a, like, B, I want to talk about this with you for a second. The value that a, a successful American man brings to an a, a Asian woman is much greater because we just have more money. We have more resources. We're able, I'm, I'm like a seriously meaningful, uh, substantial upgrade in the quality of life for not only a woman, but the children that we have together. For an American woman, I'm not that much. I still think I'm important. I think I'll still think I'm valuable. I think I'll st I think I'm still an upgrade, but it's not the same scale. So the problem is that American women think they don't need men, but then when they get to 45 years old and they don't have a man, they and they don't have children, it's too late and they kind of regret it. Um, it's it's a cold hard reality, and I think the I have this whole theory that I'm, I'm probably going to make a video about a model of you know I think women should start trying to find a partner and have kids starting at the age of 18. And delaying to 30 is really devastating to everyone, including women. If you're a nonprofit government, uh, James Wood, I don't know why you're talking about surplus stuff. What does that have to do with anything? What is that? I, I don't know who this James, James Wood, please stop talking about surplus, whatever. I don't think this is relevant to the, the video. And I'm starting to think I need to hide you from the channel if you keep doing it. Okay. So don't talk about that anymore. If I hope I'm being clear. That said, I haven't had anyone in the backseat more than five times in the last year. So the re that's my whole point. Hardly, most of the time, there's only no one in the backseat. And when there is somebody in the backseat, they're probably looking at their phone. But Tesla knows more than I do, and they did it. So they must know what they're doing, right? Tesla used the Berlin shutdown to increase production. I believe that that's true. I believe I've also heard that Texas production is up of Model Y. Uh, Brad Bradford Ferguson said that, I think he said that uh, Texas production was up. Harry Dent spoke to meet Kevin and predicts a general market collapse in 2024. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I don't know who Harry Dent is. Is he a character in a Nine Rand novel? <laughs> like, who the hell is Harry Dent? Who cares? I, I predict, I've been predicting a general uh, uh, societal, societal, socioeconomic collapse since 2013. I don't know. We, people keep believing in this ridiculous piece of paper we call the dollar. Elon should move us all his companies to incorporate on Mars. I don't think it's red. I don't think there's an incorporation system yet on Mars. Um, I have heard that cars will have third-party apps, and that's been a big part of the not Osborne effect kicking in. I just don't get the third-party app thing. Do you think the rear screen is a selling point for families with kids? It might be a selling point, but like I said, you know, the vast majority, anybody who can afford to buy a Tesla probably, I mean, my kid had a phone in like fifth grade, and that was a long time ago. Kids are probably have phones at like third grade, second grade, something like that. They got, we had iPads for our kids. Like, why would we bother having a screen there? And they can't touch it if they're in their car seat. So what's the point of having it there? And it's not really the right angle. Like, you really want it up on the headrest. I don't get it. I'm, again, the people at Tesla know what they're doing, and they probably have a reason for doing what they did. But to me, it doesn't make sense. Um, nobody predicted the Japan recession. Which recession? The one that's been going on for 30 years? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we call it a recession. It's kind of like, what do they call it? Stagflation or something or stagnation? Um, 6,000 per week Berlin production. Very nice. I did not hear that, but I'm, I'm happy to hear it. And Mark, if you say it, I believe it. Uh, so I want to just, yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of comments on this. I almost wonder if there's sort of like a, and I don't mean meta the company when I say this, I wonder if there's a meta problem that it's hard for us to wrap our heads around the question of how our biological neural nets train on diverse data. You know, the training isn't the same, right? With the car or the bot, 
the car or the bot experience something that doesn't fit with its programming or it gets something wrong and it uploads that incident to the, the training supercomputers and the training supercomputers send down new training. We don't, humans don't have some big training supercomputer we send our data up to, at least as far as we know. We don't have some big training supercomputer that sends, you know, retrains our brains after we experience something. That that's, The training happens in our brain as well. We have inference, which is how we react on, at the moment. And then this training, which is our, our mind relearning how to do things based on experience. So I feel like it's really tough for us to wrap our heads around the idea that that we're actually thinking machines somewhat similar to AI and that what data we expose ourselves to controls how we think about things and we can learn a lot more by that. Harry Schuler Dent is an American financial newsletter writer. His 2009 book, uh, The Great Depression Ahead, appeared on the New York Times bestseller list. Okay. Uh, he wrote a book 20 years ago or 15 years ago, whatever. Um, I, you know, I don't know that that guy knows, like lots of people make predictions. Uh, how many predictions has he got right? And how many has he got wrong? Amy says, good point. Maybe it's watching people in the back seat. I, I don't think there's a camera in the, in the, in the screen in the back seat. Yes, Mark, I trust you. I've been interacting with you for, is it more than two years now that you've been moderating on my live streams? You've been consistently there and, you know, I think we're on the same page a lot. So I trust you. Marriage Partners Ministry, perhaps a small car with a backseat that's convertible to storage space will replace the trunk to reduce car size. A small car with a backseat that's convertible to storage place will replace the trunk to reduce car size. Um, don't most cars have a backseat that folds flat? How is that different? I don't know how that's different. Eric Mulder says it was the news three days ago. Japan unexpectedly slips into recession. Germany now world's third biggest economy. I did not see that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that so apparently my data set is not broad enough and I missed the news. And I just got email. I get emails from Japan all the time. I get emails from the Japan Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, Japan's economy, it's kind of funny because when you're on the ground in Japan, it seems like a vibrant economy. It depends where you are. If you're in big city Japan, it's buzzing. There's a lot happening. If you're in small town Japan, you're like, what the hell happened? So it's kind of interesting there, but that was true before. So I think that's been true for a while. It's, to me, it's just a long-term trend of like kind of the cities are thriving and the, the countryside is shrinking. And, you know, where's the middle ground there? I don't know. Uh, Enos says, Warren, at what stage are you on setting up your own pod car company? Do you think you're going as you plan, meaning hiring managers, coming up with prototypes, et cetera? The plan is... Um, I, I have a rough target date of hiring my first engineer, no managers. Uh, I want to hire a full-time engineer from a Thai university um, who has experience building an EV as part of a team with uh, a local Thai university team in the formula student competition or student formula competition. Um, I think there's a good chance I will have my first hire maybe in June of this year. Um, the, the rough idea is that I will rent a four bedroom house, wherever it is I'm setting up. I'm not really setting up a company yet. Just building prototypes is sort of like, let's build some toys. And then after we have built a lot of toys, maybe we'll have one that doesn't suck and then go forward with that. Um, but you know, the cost for me to hire a full-time Thai engineer is somewhere around $10,000 a year. So if I rent a three, uh, like a four bedroom house, and then my girlfriend and I occupy two bedrooms and we use the part of the downstairs for the pod car, keeping the battery outside. You don't want a battery fire in the house. And then we hire an engineer or two. We have extra bedrooms for them. Um, so the, the, I think I'm getting closer to that. We'll see. And it's, but again, it's not a company yet. It's not a business. We're not selling anything. It's just, hey, I'm going to hire somebody. Hey, I want you to come live with me. And you know, if you want to, you don't, they don't have to live with me. But the benefit to a young Thai engineer, they make, um, I'm going to use Thai bot. 35,000 baht is $1,000. They typically make about 20 to 25,000 baht a month, which is about six, $700 a month in their first job coming out of university. And they often don't make a lot more than that for a while. And then they spend like 5,000 baht a month on rent, which is, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month on rent. And then they spend money on commuting. And if they live at their workplace, if that what they're effectively is their workplace, then they save money on rent. If I let them live there for free, then they save a lot of money. I pay them more than the average and then I let them live there for free and they don't have to 
commute. So it saves them money, it saves them time, and we hopefully live near a beach. So I hope that wasn't too long of an answer. Japan living high on the credit card, huge national debt, true. How useful do you think Optimus can be as a companion for the elderly who are lonely? Um, I think it depends on the elderly person. If the elderly person is cognitively impaired, which a lot of them are, my mother was, I think there's real potential for it with a large language model to be better at communicating with elderly people than humans because humans just get tired of hearing the same question over and over again and the, the, the bot won't. Can your pod car replace the high-polluting tuk-tuk? That's the idea. Replace tuk-tuks, replace grab bikes. For people who don't know, a tuk-tuk is a three-wheeled vehicle. Typically, they're, occasionally they're electric, but largely they're gas-powered, loud, annoying, and heavy, heavily polluting. Um, they're not that common. A lot, most of the transportation happens, um, if it's not in mass transit, which there's a, a fairly good but fairly geographically limited mass transit system in Bangkok, and none in the rest of Thailand. Um, a lot of grab cars are like grab is like it's like uber so there's grab cars and there's grab bikes um so i i think the primary target would be the grab bike and the grab car um and the tuk tuk as well but uh you know take working class thai people and this applies in a lot of other countries i'm using thailand thailand as an example take working class thai people and give them a, a quicker more comfortable more convenient cleaner and safer commute than what they have now that's the vision like we save them a lot of money on their commute, save them a lot of time on their commute, make them safer. I see all these people hop on the back of a grab bike and it's like a woman sitting side saddle on the back of a motorcycle with no helmet. I can't be that safe. Um, in my experience, a lot of men are jealous of Elon, genius, rich, good looking, successful, jealous. Um, probably. I mean, a lot of people are jealous of rich people. A lot of people are jealous of good looking people. I get. I, I never particularly thought Elon was that good looking. Um, he's obviously a genius. Uh, I actually think it's it's not his. He's a genius in so many ways. I really think his team building skills is the is the thing that is most underestimated about him. Uh, Seth Champy says the rear screen will likely give them trip information and destination timing for their Rotax trip. Yes, but you know their phone will do that too. I mean, look, I use the Grab app and I'm in the car and I can look at at my phone and I can get information on how long before we get to our destination. So I, I don't know that the screen matters that much. What about using Grok 2.0 as a consultant engineer assistant? Um, I use LLMs like ChatGPT primarily. I've been using Grok a little bit more lately. I used to use uh, Claude, which is uh, Anthropics AI. Um, I've used AIs to talk about the general ideas. I don't think they're that good at being able to say, like, what structure should we use for the chassis? Right or what motor should we use or whatever that at that level we're going to have to have an engineer. Um, is that is that coming? Is that going to get better in the future? Maybe once Optimus can farm and build houses, eighty percent of jobs won't exist. I disagree with that, Jay Kim. That's a very popular thing. <clears throat> um, once spreadsheets exist, there won't be accountants. Well, we have more accountants than ever before. Right? <clears throat> um, there's going to be a whole new job categories that are created. We can't predict all of them. My bet is uh, prompt engineering will be a big job category and Optimus Herder, Optimus Herder. I'm calling it Herder. Optimus Herder will be a big job category. Um, <clears throat> you know, we have social media marketing and social uh, search engine optimization. Will there be like Optimus Herding optimization, you know, robot herding optimization jobs? I don't know. Jay Kim says, I'm jealous of people living in Bangkok. Bangkok is good. The air quality sucks. Um, if you don't live on a major transit line, I'm on, I near the BTS. If you're not near BTS or an MRT line, there's Bangkok re, uh, transit system and me, uh, Metro, metropolitan regional transit. Um, if you're not near one of those stations, then transportation is not that great. Food is cheap. Food is good. Uh, people are nice. People are friendly. If you're male, if you're a Western male, boy, there's a lot of pretty girls here and they like Western men. Um, is autism is a superpower. A lot of people are autistic and don't have the superpower. So maybe Elon advertising in stealth mode on YouTube. Any ideas? There, no, Tesla is advertising on YouTube. They are advertising on YouTube. So, so I don't, I feel like no one's, no one's grabbing onto this. I, it, it bothers me. This is something that's like possessed me. This idea that our brains are biological neural nets, which Elon says, you know, Andre Karpathy refers to it as the meat computer. We're running neural nets in our brains. Our neural nets are trained on the data that we experience in our lives. And 
you know, I jokingly talk about this all the time now that I just hear people talking in Thai and at some point it's just going to click and you know, my, my neural nets are going to be trained on hearing all this Thai language. I don't know. Um, James Wood, but which one's what? I don't know which one's what. So I, I really think this is something that, is this too, like, how are, are we capable of really comprehending the idea that our biological, that our brains are biological neural nets and we're trained on data? Like, we don't have any data to train us on this idea. I don't know. Do you think we're in a bubble right now? Amazon is like 100x earnings, same with NVIDIA. Well, I don't know about Amazon. Um, NVIDIA really is poised for very, very high growth. It's a really tricky question. Like, is there competition coming for NVIDIA and does it matter? If the market for uh, AI training chips is going to grow like a really rapid rate, it doesn't even matter if competition comes along because the market is so huge that they're just going to keep growing. Um, Amazon, I'm not so sure about. I mean, I think Amazon's great. I mean, I was an investor in Amazon until I sold it and bought Tesla. Um, what are you talking about podcasts? They, they, we know that they advertised on YouTube. We know that they ran some test ads on YouTube. I don't think they advertised like specifically on a podcast. I think they just bought ads on YouTube. People saw YouTube ads. That's not necessarily targeting a specific channel. My neural nets are trained on booze and pot. It's pathetic. But no, but our neural nets are trained on who we talk to. They're trained on, like, I'm literally like, all right, I'm with my girlfriend and we're having some fun in the bedroom, right? What did I just do? What did she respond to? What did she just do? What did I respond to? Um, are, are we training our neural nets we're in bed to get, when we're in bed together? Are we training our neural nets when we're hanging out with our friends, having a beer and just talking? Are we training our neural nets? I think we're always training our neural nets. When you're eating lunch and you're, you, know, you order food and you get this food in response. And then like, like, I didn't really like that as much as I thought I would. Well, you kind of trained your neural nets. There's so many different ways that we're training our neural nets. Um, you know, I, like maybe monogamy is a bad idea because you should have sex with lots of different people so you can train your neural nets on uh, sexual encounters with lots of different people. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. How do, I don't know how that happened. I just waved my hand in front of the screen or something and like... I, I, I never, I, that's happened to me like two or three times recently. I don't know where it comes from. So, and it comes on, it's my, it's my streaming software that does it. I'm using this software called OBS and I saw it on my screen before you saw it on YouTube. So it wasn't YouTube doing it. Um, James Wood says, I've heard rumors of Tesla boats, but not vetted these DMs limit words. Um, there's, uh, they have talked about, um, I don't think they specifically talked about boats. It may be in the master plan that they talked about boats or shipping. Um, there has been some electric uh, boating ish uh, ideas. I think the Trans Pacific um, car uh, cargo shipping is going to be tough. This is the, the the quantity of batteries you need to make a Trans Pacific uh, shipment would be tough. I think the Boring Company does a tunnel under the Bering Strait, connects China to North America, and then that basically eliminates trans-Pacific shipping. And, and I think a lot of stuff that is done on boats gets done on, on boring company tunnel systems. And airplanes, same thing. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just feel like this is like, is, it, is this too hard? Uh, VTOL, I think VTOL, is, is, um, VTOL needs really high, really high energy density batteries, according to Elon. And I think that Hyperloop is going to be better than VTOL. Let's get the semis and bots going before we introduce another product. Well, we've got the next gen vehicle coming. We've got semi coming. Optimus is on its way. Um, I think there's going to be a van. Roadster may be coming. Um, we're still waiting for Performance Model 3. Jay Kim in Thailand, if you have enough money, you can father children from multiple girlfriends. No need to marry anyone. It'll probably be more fun to just saying, I, I personally think one woman is more fun than more than one woman, but that's just an opinion. I think I think I think having one woman in your head is already too complicated. And having two or more women in your head would just like drive me batshit crazy. Do you think Elon is interested in serious radio? Warren Buffett loading boat. I don't see why Elon would be interested in serious radio. Um, I think it would probably be really expensive, and I suppose Starlink could just offer a satellite radio service anytime they wanted. But I don't think that there's 
I think that we're heading towards a world of Neuralink and Neuralink will be the, the connection that everybody has to all kinds of entertainment. And I think that's like 10 years away. So would you want to invest in building up a satellite um, radio network when everybody's going to be listening on their Neuralinks anyway? Um, Sirius doing some kind of split, something. I, I just don't pay attention to Sirius. Like I, I think I, I'm surprised that radio is still around. Uh, you know, it, it's got remarkable persistence. I have a friend who works in radio in New York, in the New York City area, and he totally, I think it's like, sort of like radio has sort of shifted to the internet, but it's still there. It's still going. Convergence of tech, something, tech is what accelerates progress. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Wait, I really feel like this is, this is not like, am I the only one who sees this? This issue about how our brains process data like if you limit yourself to narrow data your understanding of the world is limited the more diverse data you expose your brain to the more you understand the world if you go to college and you expose yourself to a bunch of leftist professors and leftist students telling you that israel is evil and capitalism is evil and there are no genders uh does getting exposed to that enough train your kids brains that that all this stuff is true and how do you counter that training? I remember my kids were in school and they would say, you know, they would say something about, you know, rich people have too much money and the poor need help. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to, the school's decided that they're going to take, you know, all the kids with A grades, they're going to reduce them to Bs and they're going to bring the D kids up to Cs because it's not fair that the kids are getting Ds. And like, well, wait a minute, I worked hard for my A grade. Yeah, okay. Now you understand the rich people side of things. Um, DeWiz says Amex is the worst card. High merchant charges mean limited use. Uh, I haven't had a bad experience with Amex at all. My experiences, and by the way, I'll, I'll pump it again, the top of the chat and in the video description, and I'll pump it here as well. Um, if you uh, sign up for an Amex card, uh, there's a link in the description. There's a link at the top of the chat. Then I get a $75 uh, referral reward. And you can get $250 cash back after you spend $3,000 on the Blue Cash Preferred card. You know, I, I, I'm not saying that it's perfect. I'm not saying there aren't issues. Um, and, you know, make sure you check the terms and conditions and all that. But uh, my experience, um, it's been the best card for me in Asia. So if you're going to travel in Asia, like my city card just got denied today for no particular reason. I've had this issue with uh, my city card and my visa card. My MasterCard and my visa card, both I had issues like that. And I haven't had any problems with my Amex card. But there, there are some vendors that don't take Amex. So that's the negative side of it. But I think it's good to, it's, like, it's diverse data. You want to have diverse data. You want to have Visa, MasterCard, and Amex. And maybe a, maybe a debit card. And in Thailand, there's this whole thing going on, by the way, with um, QR code payments. I think it originated in India. It's very common in Thailand. I think it's a thing in China. I don't think we have it much in the US, but it's probably coming. I don't really understand it yet. I don't have it yet. I, I just got a phone. I think I'm going to be getting a QR code soon. Um, once I get a bank account, be interesting to see that. Um, age becomes a factor at some point for all these technologies to roll out. I'm not sure what you mean by age. I could see it creating better prosthetic limbs. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that the robotics and the AI will lead to better prosthetic limbs. Johnny says, how much is your apartment per month? You should give us a door. I've been doing Airbnbs and I'm still in Airbnbs. Um, my expectation is that I will rent a place for around $700 a month that will either be a two bedroom condo in a high rise tower with a rooftop swimming pool and a, and a, and a gym. And you can watch, there's a bunch of channels on, what's it called? There's a bunch of YouTube channels based in Thailand. I think it's Retired Working For You is the one He's kind of gone a little heavy on real estate and his most recent videos are like the more high-end places. But if you look at his older videos and look at some other videos, you'll see like $300 a month condos in nice buildings. Um, and they're small. The, the $300 ones are small. The $700 ones are bigger. I'm actually thinking I can probably get a house for like $700 a month. I saw one that I could rent for like $700 a month, but not necessarily where I want to be. Where I want to be should be cheaper, actually. I, I don't know where I want to be yet, where I think I want to be. Worried Elon will run out of time before doing what he just announced. Uh, I do, Elon is 50 years old-ish, 50, 51, 52, something like that. I think he's got 20 good years left in him, maybe 25, 30 years left in him, let's hope. 
I think there's a lot he can do. I think the biggest thing he's doing, he's building teams and building cultures that will carry on without him if they have to. I think the team at Tesla is strong. The team at SpaceX is strong. I do worry that if he's gone, it'll be a problem. But I think that there's an awful lot of people built into these companies that uh, want to move forward in the, in the right way. Um, California moving to minimum wage of $50 an hour. That's hilarious. It's so, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but it's just hilarious. The, the minimum wage in Thailand is $10 a day a day and thailand pays more than like laos and cambodia and, and myanmar the most wealthier entrepreneurs who drive innovation if you remove the incentive structure of wealth innovation dies that's look i mean just look at plain and simple where's all the innovation happening in the world it's happening in the united states because there's still in there's still a reward for the innovation there's not much innovation in japan there's not much innovation in europe that like it am i using a vpn i use a vpn when i need to to like one of my uh, banks it's actually a credit union does not work when I connect directly from uh, my regular uh, Wi-Fi, whatever I'm on. Um, and uh, Amex connects me to Thailand's Amex and I, I have to use the VPN to connect to the, but this is an issue with a lot of institutions though. So I, I use a v, I use Proton VPN. I should probably put a link to that. I do like Proton VPN, but I haven't put a link to that yet. Maybe I should, can I get a referral for that? I do pay for it. QR code's huge in Cambodia, too. You scan a QR code to pay or transfer money in seconds. DeWiz says, I never use debit. That's my money. Credit is the bank's money. Banks work harder protecting their money experience. Do you think Elon's robots will create sporting events using robots? I don't think humans want to watch sporting events with robots. I, I There's like there's already robotic competitions and people don't watch them. Be Nice says, Elon has babies. He needs to be around for a while. Yep. Elon's 52. Uh... James Wood, maybe tennis or basketball. I just don't think people want to watch robots play sports. I think that you're going to see AI generated content. You're going to see AI. We we're already seeing AI generated Instagram models, AI generated adult entertainment stars. I think that's that's what we're going to start be, as they become indistinguishable from regular people. Um, then it makes sense to not pay a Hollywood actor $20 million a film if you can generate an AI-generated character that people would identify with. Uh, you know, I don't think that's that far away. I think we're less than five years away from a lot of very successful AI-generated video content with AI-generated actors. Um, you know, initially, the old, you'll probably have an AI-generated version of some actor. You know, there'll be an AI Brad Pitt, and Brad Pitt will get a piece of whatever it's in. But eventually, you'll just have some AI-generated characters that people will identify with just from the get-go, and you won't have any human to have to pay for it. Uh, so I think, you know, my my older daughter is a stage actress. I think stage actors have a lot longer window, but I think um, actors, human actors working on video, I think their time is limited. I think screenwriters, their time is limited. Playwriters, their time is limited. I think that you're seeing a lot of good content written by AIs. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of good video generation by AIs. I mean, Runway LL, ML is not that great, but it's not terrible. And what we're looking at with Sora looks pretty good. Humans will want robot matches that involve robots destroying each other. No, but they don't. That, those already exist and people don't watch them. They don't get a lot of volume. It's not popular. So, all right. So I feel like I couldn't get people going on this topic. So I'm going to go on X. And I'm going to do the same thing talking about this particular topic alone uh, shortly. So if you're interested in talking about that topic, please join me on the X. I haven't created the space yet, but I'll create the space in a few minutes and we'll go there. Um, yeah, full AI movies are coming for sure. So um, so thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you, Mark Potochnik, for moderating the chat. Um, can you get back to us on Elon's advertising on YouTube? He's advertising on YouTube. It's not on a podcast. He's advertising on YouTube. Tesla is advertising on YouTube. We've seen it. They're advertising on YouTube. They're advertising on X. There's nothing to get back to you about. There's no specific podcast that they're targeting that I'm aware of. So thanks, everybody, so much. Uh, please follow me on X. Please check the link for Amex. Check the video description for all the stuff. Check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. And thank you so much for watching.